thousands of people turn to the internet for help because they have a burning computer and network problem that they cannot solve. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the Packet A Team. Gary Rogers, PacketBomb.com. We've got a case study here from Reddit.com, the networking subreddit. Person says, slow network throughput for the first 6.5 seconds. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. iPerf, blah, blah, blah. I've been trying to figure out the problem for over a month. Any thoughts? Sure, I've got some thoughts. Uh, if you were able to take a PCAP and do a basic bit of analysis, you could solve this in five minutes. That's my thoughts. So why don't we do that? Let's look at the PCAP that the person provided after people asked to provide PCAP so we could solve it. Uh, here's a PCAP of said problem somewhere in here. I don't know what I'm looking for, whatever, but let's. here's where I'm going to start. Let's go to com statistics and conversations. I'm going to do TCP. There's 24 TCP connections. Why don't we sort by bytes? The highest one is far and away the highest one. There's nothing close. And, oh, it is port 5001, which happens to be iPerf. This is probably the one I care about. So you can do uh, follow stream here. All right, and so here we are with this iPerf stream. So I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking... Great. I like to see we have the three-way handshake because there's some valuable information in there. Uh, we have this first 24-byte packet, which is pretty typical from what I've seen from iPerf. And, you know, of course, these TCP re retransmissions jump out at me. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, if you see my videos, you know I don't usually have a particular layout that I use. Uh, the columns that I use in Wireshark come and go. The ones I use most often, I'm going to probably have TCP length up here. I'm going to have sequence number, next sequence number, and ACK, especially when I'm troubleshooting performance because I want to see uh, the, the data flow and be able to do sequence number analysis. So what jumps out at me is this TCP length of 8948. That's very large. Typical MTU is 1,500 bytes. So uh, maybe this is offloading. Uh, if you know, if you do read my site, there is a, something I wrote up called How Can the Packet Size Be Greater Than the MTU? And that covers TCP offloading with NIC cards. So maybe that's what that is. Uh, one way to look, if we go to the SIN, that three-way handshake, the SIN packet, if we go open up TCP, Go down to the options, look at the maximum segment size that is allowed, and it's actually 8960. So allow 20 bytes for the TCP header, 20 bytes for the IP header, that's 9000 bytes, that's a jumbo frame. How about the server side? Uh, go down, open up the options, same thing, 8960. So that tells me the client and the server are configured for jumbo frames. And if we look at the latency between them, it's microseconds. So this is on a LAN, so great. Most likely this is an actual jumbo frame. It's 9,014 bytes, 14 bytes for the ethernet header, so that's a 9,000 byte MTU. So this is, this is a jumbo frame. So we, we send one, there's an ACK. The ACK is for that 24 byte packet up here because if we look at the acknowledgement number of 1129, that's acknowledging bytes up to and including 1128. So that is this packet. And then we send another 8948 byte packet. And the next thing that happens is the Wireshark says it's a retransmission. It is, in fact, sequence number 1129, which is maps back up here to this first large size frame that we sent of 1129. Now, blue for me. Uh, signifies the push bit, that, and orange is uh, a delta of 200 milliseconds or more. Actually, I set those a few videos ago, and they're just still in here. But I find it useful, so I've left it. So let's um, let's change. I've got just the time. Let's go to view. 
time display format, second since previous displayed packet. Of course, you can add a TCP delta uh, or a delta column if you want in here. So this one comes 200 milliseconds from the previous packet, which these are microseconds in between. So this one comes about 200 milliseconds after it was first transmitted. 200 milliseconds is a pretty typical round uh, trip timeout. Uh, generally, that's calculated on the fly. 200 milliseconds is pretty pretty typical. And then we send it again, the same sequence number, same data, 400 milliseconds, then 800 milliseconds, and 1.6 seconds. This is exponential back off, folks. Uh, and after we, we retransmit it one, two, three, four times, we see the same sequence number, but look at the, the TCP length. It's 512 bytes. And you can look at the next sequence number has changed. This is obviously a lot less. This is reflecting the fact that we've only sent 512 bytes. The next packet is an ACK, and it is ACKing 1641. This next sequence number of the one we sent is 1641. That means this packet was received and is being acknowledged. So this 512 byte packet got through uh, when these other ones didn't. And then if we look, so this was um, 1641, the next one is 1641, and then the next sequence number is 2153. It's down here. I don't know what that is. 89, that actually, that actually comes from up here. The next thing was number 9025, so this is 9025. But the next act we get is, this one uh, apparently did not get through, but we got 2153, which acknowledges this one. And then from that point on, we send these small, you know, mostly 512 byte packets. As we can see, this is, uh, the next thing number on this one is 3149. The ACK is 3149, so they're getting through. And then, you know, so we sent these first two here. Uh, sorry, this one, 8948, 8948. It's like over 17,000 bytes. So then we send all that data. We retransmit it. These are all, re all retransmissions as 512-byte chunks. And then around here, we actually send them all. We're all caught up, I guess you could say. And that took, let's find out. So if we go back to, let's change this to view time display format, uh, time since beginning of capture. Let's set a time reference on this particular uh, connection. Do, 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 do. And so we recover after we tried to send huge packets, jumbo frames that didn't get through. We, then we chop them up in little bitty 512 byte packets and send all that data. It takes right at almost 6.5 seconds to do it. Ta-da! That explains the, you know, as he saw, 6.5 second delay at the top. So what's happening here is we're trying to send a jumbo frame some, something between the client and server is not configured for jumbo frames and it's dropping it. And then this particular sending TCP stack must have some kind of heuristic to say, you know, we tried to send this large frame amount of data, it didn't get through, so let's try again and just try really small sizes and see if that works. And oh, it does. Now what really should happen is it would either get fragmented unless the DF bit is set. Is the DF bit set? Da, 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 da. Don't fragment. Don't fragment. There it is. Yes. So it's not, this should not get fragmented. So it should get dropped. And then whatever's dropping it, because its MTU is lower, should send back an ICMP message uh, saying that the MTU has been exceeded and we have to drop this. And here's, the, here's my MTU. So if I do or ICMP. There's nothing here. So whatever device dropped it did not send an ICMP message back. 
doing path MTU discovery to the sender. So either some device dropped the ICMP message, like a firewall that's configured to drop ICMP, or the device that dropped it is configured with no IP unreachables and it just doesn't send it to start with. So those two things can break path MTU discovery. And we're just lucky that the sending stack decided to try smaller packets, otherwise this connection just would have broken and died a horrible, horrible death. So you need to go through, figure out the devices in between, find the MTU of the interface that is not set properly and fix it. Or, I mean, of course, you could use a lower MTU on your end devices, but then, um, you know, if you're on a LAN and you're using jumbo frames, then great, you're going to get better throughput. So there you go. That's it. That's what's going on. That explains the 6.5 second delay. It's an MTU problem. Uh, you know, spot it. If someone came to this problem, like, hey, I have this problem, like, give me a PCAP, and you spend five minutes, you're like, oh, here's a problem. And then you go look and you find the device that you track it down and you fix it. Or you can spend a month and then you can go to Reddit and then I'll fix it for you. All right, till next time.